Hello, hi, my name is Samuel Izerza for the SE channel. I want to welcome to my channel and please thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe and share as much as you can. And thank you for tuning in to my channel. Okay, well, tonight we're going to listen just a little bit here and there some of the um, answer why they want to impeach uh, Donald Trump. I mean, the best answer so far is uh, Tulsi Gabbard. She, uh, she actually, she's the one that makes probably the most sense out of all these uh, clowns in the Democratic Party. So, uh, I mean, this is my personal view. I mean, I listen to most of it and, and um, they just don't make sense. Honestly, they just don't make sense. You want to divide a country, impeach the president. Uh, you, you want to hand down the president of the United States, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the presidency, go ahead, impeach him. Impeach what? What are they going to impeach? Off a telephone call? A lot worse has been done. But Tulsi Gabbard had the probably the best answer out of all of them. I mean, we're going to listen here and there, um, but we're going to listen to her answer the most. It's just, it's just not even worth going there uh, with these people. Hold on a minute. Just, just want to... Yeah. Since the last debate, House Democrats have officially launched an impeachment inquiry against President Trump, which all the candidates on this stage support. Senator Warren, I want to start with you. You have said that there's already enough evidence for President Trump to be impeached and removed from office. But the question is, with the election only one year away, why shouldn't it be the voters who determine the president's there's evidence? What evidence? <laughs> what evidence? I read the I, I, I read the transcript. All he said was do me a favor. There's no uh, quid pro quo or whatever it's called. I don't know. Already she made up her mind. That Fate. Because sometimes there are issues that are bigger than politics, and I think that's the case with this impeachment inquiry. When I made the decision to run for president, I certainly didn't think it was going to be about impeachment. But when the Mueller report came out, I read it, all 442 pages. Really? And when I got to the end, I re Really? You read the whole 440? I don't believe you realized that uh, Mueller had shown to a fare thee well that this president had obstructed justice and done it repeatedly. And so at that moment... Actually, that's wrong. They showed no obstruction of justice. 100%, that's what it showed. I called for opening an impeachment inquiry. Now, that didn't happen, and look what happened as a result. Donald Trump broke the law again in the summer, broke it again this fall. You know, we took a constitutional oath, and that is that no one is above the law, and that includes the President of the United States. Impeachment is the way that we establish that this man... More like a coup, coup d'etat. Here, let's listen to somebody else. ...into a speedy and expeditious impeachment process, but Mitch McConnell... Thank has you. got to do the right thing and allow a free and fair trial in the Senate. Vice President Biden, during the Clinton impeachment proceedings, you said, and I quote, the American people don't think that they've made a mistake by electing Bill Clinton, and we in Congress had better be very careful before we upset their decision. With the country now split, have Democrats been careful enough in pursuing the impeachment of President Trump? Yes, they have. I said from the beginning that if, in fact, Trump continued to stonewall what the Congress is entitled to know about his background, what he did, all the accusations in the Mueller report. If they did that, they would have no choice, no choice but to begin an impeachment proceeding, which gives them more power to seek more information. This president, and I agree with Bernie, Senator Sanders, is the most corrupt president in modern history, and I think all of our history. And the fact is that this president of the United States is... Like the Bidens are not corrupt at all. You want to see corruption? You're looking at it. Gone so far as to say, since this latest event, that in fact he will not cooperate in any way at all, will not list any witnesses, will not provide any information, will not do anything to cooperate with the impeachment. They have no choice but to move. A moment where we would have a corrupt president. And our framers then rightly designed our system of democracy to say there will be checks and balances. This is one of those moments, and so Congress must act. act. But the reality of it is that I don't really think this impeachment process is going to take very long, because as a former prosecutor, I know a confession when I see it. And, and he did it in plain sight. There's he has no given proof. us the evidence, and he tried to cover it. There's no proof. 
There's literally no proof. And it, it will not it will never pass the Senate. They just want to keep this going, going, going. That brings our country together doesn't rip us apart. Anybody who has criticisms about a process that is making all the facts bare before the American public, that works to build consensus, that's what this nation needs in what is a moral moment and not a political one. So I swore an oath to do my job as a senator, to do my duty. This president has violated his. I will do mine. Thank you, Senator Booker. Uh, Senator Klobuchar. Call uh, to the head of Ukraine. He's digging up dirt on an opponent. That's illegal conduct. That's what he was doing. He didn't talk to him about the Russian invasion. He talked to him about that. So I'm still waiting to find out from him how making that call to the head of Ukraine and trying to get him involved in interfering in our election makes America great again. I'd like to hear from him. He has put his own private interests, and I will not do that. Thank you, Secretary Cassis, or tried to. Um, and he made that call to uh, President Zelensky of the Ukraine. But he is ongoingly, in an ongoing way, violating his oath of office and abusing his power. We have to impeach this president. And the majority of Americans not only support impeachment, they support removal. He should be removed. Uh, Mayor Buttigieg, you have said that impeachment should be bipartisan. There's been obviously very little Republican support to date, yet Democrats are proceeding. Is that a mistake? Well, it's a mistake on the part of Republicans who enable a president whose actions are as offensive to their own supposed values as they are to the values that we all share. Look, the president has left the Congress with no choice. And this is not just about holding the president accountable for not just the things emerging in these investigations, but actions that he has confessed to on television. It's also about the presidency itself, because a president 10 years no or 100 years from now will look back at... There's no proof. There's absolutely no proof. I don't know what they're talking about. What it's going to be like, what it's actually going to feel like in this country the first day the sun comes up after Donald Trump has been president. It starts out feeling like a happy thought. This particular brand of chaos and corruption will be over, but... Really think about where we'll be, vulnerable, even more torn apart by politics than we are right now. And these big issues, from the economy to climate change, have not taken a vacation during the impeachment process. I'm running to be the president who can turn the page and unify a dangerously polarized country while tackling those issues Thank that you. are going to be just as urgent then as they are now. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Congresswoman Gabbard, you're the only sitting House member on this stage. How do you respond? <laughs> Listen to this. Uh, if impeachment is driven by these hyper-partisan interests, it will only further divide an already terribly divided country. Unfortunately, this is what we've already seen uh, play out as calls for impeachment really began shortly after Trump won his election. And, and as unhappy as that may make us as Democrats, he won that election in 2016. The serious issues that have been raised around this uh, phone call that he had with the president of Ukraine and many other things that transpired around that are what caused me to support the inquiry uh, in the House. And I think that it should continue to play its course out, to gather all the information, provide that to the American people, uh, recognizing that that is the only way forward. If the House votes to impeach, the Senate uh, does not vote to remove Donald Trump. He walks out and he feels exonerated, further deepening the divides in this country that we cannot afford.